Hi, I'm Cindy Cloward with Riley Blake Designs, and today we're celebrating the color of the year. Pantone puts out a color of the year every January, but this year they chose two colors. They chose a gray and a yellow to symbolize strength and optimism. At the beginning of the year, Riley Blake Designs created a bundle of our confetti cottons that captured the essence of the color of the year. So beautiful shades of yellow and grays even into the charcoals. So each month on our Instagram and our blog, we feature monthly projects using this fabric bundle out of our confetti cottons. I have a few of the project behind me and I'm going to show you today how to create two quilt blocks featuring the colors. This is called Hovering Hawks and this is called Double Sawtooth. You repeat these one 13 times, one 12 times, and it can make this beautiful quilt behind me. Instructions on how to make the complete quilt are on our Riley Blake Designs website. Let me show you how to create the first block, Hovering Hawks. So there's a lot of half square triangles in this block. I'm gonna show you two different ways to create them. So look at these half square triangles. We're gonna start with those. And you take your yellow square and your charcoal square and put them together. And from this, we're gonna create two half square triangle units. But first we need to make our mark corner to corner on the top yellow piece. Make sure it's nice and clear. So this is not your sew line, this is your mark line. You are going to sew a fourth inch on each side of this line. And so make sure you have a very accurate fourth inch seam allowance. It's gonna be important because there's a lot of different blocks to make sure that is completely accurate. So let's take it to the machine and sew. Right, now that marked line down the center can be your cut line. You've got your two half square triangle units. Take it to your pressing station. Give it a quick press. And then I open them up, pressing the seam to the dark side. And since you've got some bias sides and it stretches more, I tend to not um, mist or spritz with that because I don't want to stretch out my fabric. And you really want to truly press. A lot of times I'm moving my iron around, but really you want to just put your um, iron on your unit and press it. And I put my clapper on there while it's cooling. Make sure that's pulled tight. Hold it for a minute. Let it cool off. And we're gonna square these up in a minute. So we're gonna square those up to three and a half inches. But first, we are going to make our next half square triangle units. And this time, instead of making two at a time, I'm gonna show you how to make four at a time. And how we do this is we put our two pieces of fabric on top of each other, just like this. And we're gonna take it to the machine and sew around the entire perimeter using a fourth inch seam allowance, pivoting on the corners. So let's take it to the machine and sew. The next thing you're gonna do is cut this from corner to corner on opposite sides. Just like this. Using your rotary cutter and a ruler Okay, just kind of shift it like that. And 
and you've got that and you've got your half square triangle units. I'm going to repeat it for this second square and then press them all together. All right, get, grab your rotating mat and we're going to square up all our blocks at once. Now they're all a little bigger because we want them perfectly accurate when we start sewing them together. So they're a little larger and you're just going to use your square up ruler and trim them all up to the same size. Again, putting this diagonal right on that seam line and the mat is just what you need to do it quickly and accurately. Isn't that a fast way to make half square triangles quickly, easily, and accurately? And now we're ready to assemble our block. We start with the yellow facing towards each other. Then you have this, these squares, charcoals going on a diagonal like that. This lighter gray on the opposite corners. Now look at your diagram to make sure these are going the right way because it's easy to turn them the wrong way. Okay, look it over, make sure everything's going the correct direction and it's ready to take the machine and sew your, all your units together to make one block. piece my units together and I really like working with a design board so you open them back up make sure everything's in the correct position and you go to your next row laying over top and I don't cut my chain piecing when I'm creating my block helps things go together smoother and they're it makes it much easier if you don't cut at this stage. We've got our first four rows sewn. Now we're going to connect the rest of the rows. We just flip them over and we're going to nest our seams. This is where I pin on the seam and I also pin on my two ends. And since they're pressed to the dark side, they should already be flipping in the opposite direction. It should nest perfectly or wiggle them into place so they do. And to save time, I usually just pin all my rows at once. Take a look, make sure all your 
points are lining up. Looks good. Now give it a press before we square it up. And for the most part, it looks good to go. If you've got an accurate seam allowance, you really shouldn't have to trim it up hardly at all. There's just a, one little angle I'm going to trim off. Okay, and your Hovering Hawks block is finished. You just have to repeat this 12 times if you'd like to make this quilt. We're moving on to our double sawtooth block. I'm going to grab it over here. This is the next block we're working on. These are the fabric requirements. So this double sawtooth quilt block just features flying geese on all the corners and it makes a really cute sunflower. But it is a little tricky that the colors are very similar. So you've got four shades of yellow. So lay them out, make sure you know where each color goes because you're using a lot of similar shades. So I'm going to show you how to do a quick and easy method of flying geese all at one time. We're going to start with all the same color yellows and you get your one, this is a four and a half inch quilt block and you're going to take your other light yellow fabrics. They are different but they look very similar. And you're going to lay these squares on opposite corners like this. Now when you're doing this method, I always press them on and it almost gives a little bit of a tackiness so the fabric sticks together. That heat kind of bonds them together like that. So I always give it a good press when I put them on opposite corners. And then you're going to draw your line corner to corner with your marking tool. And again, this is not your stitch line. This is your guide. You're going to sew a fourth inch on each side of the line. Make sure it's accurate. Okay, bring it back. And with that press, I didn't even have to add pins to it. It just kind of stayed in place. Now you can use that line, that center marked line as your cutting line. And you're going to have these two units that look like this. Now you're going to take it to your pressing station and you're going to press it open. Nice hot iron. Okay, bring these units back. Actually, you need to press this again, so I'm going to take that back over. And by pressing again, you can see how the fabric just kind of adheres a little more to uh, your base unit. So now we're going to mark that again, corner to corner. Your two pieces. Just like that. Again, not your stitch line, it's your guide. So you're going to use a fourth inch seam allowance on each side of the line. Okay, 
Okay, I kind of chain piece those together. Well, you can use, even use your little seam ripper to cut the chain. Now you can use that line as your cutting line. And you've created your four flying geese units all at once. Give them a quick press. And then one at a time. I'm going to open them up. Okay, we need to square up these units. Sometimes they can tend to get a little wonky. I use a, a square ruler. And just on one side, I line up the point of my flying geese at the top, make sure I have a fourth inch seam allowance, and trim up the, the sides. And it would be a really good idea to use your rotating mat at this stage. So I've got my four flying geese units for the inner part of my double saw. So that's the inside. Now I'm going to do my outside flying geese units using the exact same method. This is probably a lot easier to see because there's more contrast in the fabrics. Again, the exact same method to make four flying geese units at one time. assembling our block. We know these are on the outside. And the flying geese are flying towards the center. We got our center block in here, which is a yellow. And our flying geese are flying towards the center, so make sure they're facing the right way. So now, we, what we need to do now is assemble this center block, or right here, the center unit. And we're just going to put those like this. Make sure they're all facing the right direction. Looks good. Let's flip those over. Okay, 
bring it back over. Looks good. Okay, now we're going to sew those all three sections together, nesting our seams. Bring it back over and take a look. I notice all my points are not caught in the seam. That's exactly what you want. I end up using a scant fourth of an inch, which means just slightly under a fourth of an inch. So I made sure I didn't um, cut off my points with the seam. So I'm going to press this real quickly. And there's a lot of bulk um, with all these seams. Uh, converging at the same area. So I'm going to choose to open up the seam on the back, that last two seams, to see if I can get that a little less bulk. Just going to open up that seam right there. Usually you press your seams to one side and the other in quilting. But sometimes when you have a lot of converging seams, it's better to open up your seams and press it that way. There's a lot of different yellows in that, but I like the way that looks. It's very subtle and it should be six and a half inches. Since I used a, a scant fourth an inch, I'm just going to, there's a little to trim on the outside, but make sure your points on your flying geese are not um, trimmed off or you're shorting them tremendously because you have a point here and two points here and you don't want those trimmed off so it makes it that your points are cut off when you're doing your, your seams. So that's good to go. That's six and a half inches. And now we're going to fully assemble our block by sewing these center units to the outside, these units to the center, and then sewing our last two seams. I did just sew my last seam. And I did want you to note my last two seams. I opened my seams up instead of sewing them one direction or the other. And I think it really helps with the bulk. So I'm just going to kind of finger press. And you can see that I've opened my seams. And that is just, it alleviates some of the bulk in the, your quilt block. But if you want to just put one of your seams, your seams to one side or the other, that's perfectly fine to do. Okay, I'm going to give a press on top. And your quilt block is almost finished. You just need to square it up. And if you've been careful along the way, you shouldn't have to square up much. Again, you can use this grid to line up with your seams and see where everything lands. So I'm not going to trim up a thing and my double sawtooth quilt block is finished. That's how easy it is to make both these quilt blocks. We hope you will celebrate the color of the year with us by making one of our projects. Thank you.